What's up, Tweener? Welcome back to another Tweener Tennis video today here on the channel. And today we have a very special interview. We finally got YouTube's favorite professional tennis player on our channel. Yes, we got the Ilya Marchenko when we were down in Rome, Georgia. And it was nice to sit down and finally talk to him about his experience, what it's like being a content creator while having a full-time job when it comes to being a professional tennis player and talking about the sport and vlogging your whole experience, what that was like, his new transition into coaching and coaching while being a player and seeing how that works and how he balances that out. And I would love for you guys to show Ilya some love down in the description with his social medias and everything like that. Make sure to go show him some love. We would love to have him back on the channel to make some more videos. And we want to thank Rome Tennis Center and their tournament director for having us down there we really do appreciate it now if you guys do enjoy this video make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel we've had a lot of new people join the channel recently so we're very grateful to have all of you here so make sure you stick around longer make sure to hit that notification bell because we've been posting a lot more videos and we would love to see you guys back here on the channel so make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on and we'll see you guys in the next one now enjoy our interview with Ilya Marchenko But thank you for finally doing this. It's, yeah, no it's, a, it's when worlds collide with uh, YouTube's favorite tennis player right here. Yeah. I mean, you were telling me earlier off camera too that you're kind of taking yeah. a break from it. Can you explain why? Well, I'm uh, playing coaching yeah. now and uh, it's just too much work. And uh, for me alone, it was a bit too difficult to find motivation and everything mm -hmm. uh, to do it uh, regularly and mm -hmm. uh, if you cannot do it regularly I think uh, you shouldn't do it uh, at all okay and uh, if you're not putting a hundred percent in you're not yeah I mean it's it's a lot of work a lot of editing and uh, yeah basically you rather just yeah it, uh, before when I was just playing it it could work I could yeah. find time but now uh, as I'm coaching as well and uh, those weeks are really really tough yeah. uh, physically and emotionally so yeah I just decided to take a break from it what, what's been the biggest kind of surprise for you coaching because being kind of a player slash coach we've seen it in other sports with uh, football when we saw Ryan Giggs do it with Manchester United do you find that tough to balance well, definitely, it's uh, you have to work on yourself, mm -hmm. and you have to work uh, on your player. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, two times as much work. So <laughs> I mean, it, sometimes you can cheat a bit and uh, practice with him. So you yeah. practice both okay. you and uh, him, but uh, it still, I think he is losing in terms of coaching in okay. this uh, in this, during these practices. Okay, and you are losing a bit as well because you have to focus not only on yourself but on him as well, and mm -hmm. then uh, do exercises what he needs yeah and then like yeah it's not uh, perfect I would yeah. say so yeah you definitely lose here and there but uh, otherwise it's uh, you kind of see the perspective okay because uh, from the coaching side yeah and uh, you can apply that to to your game as well yeah. uh, psychologically wise and everything it's like uh, and for him it's also good because uh, he doesn't need to explain me how he feels because I know exactly how he feels. Uh, so it's not like I was playing 10 years ago, I'm still playing, I know exactly uh, what he thinks about it and, uh, and what emotions uh, he's gone through. Yeah, he's gone through during the match, so it's uh, easier for me to understand. It's more relatable, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, I know exactly how I would play against him, so yeah. I know exactly his weak spots and uh, his strong sides, so it, I can feel it. Yeah. I, like, with the ball sometimes, like, this week uh, I'm playing pretty bad, but uh, everyone is playing bad because these balls are uncontrollable, so... Okay. Yeah, you have to adapt, and uh, mm -hmm. if I'm just a coach and I'm not feeling this, and I see my player is uh, cannot put uh, two balls inside the court, yeah. I'm like uh, I'm get pissed and uh, yeah. probably like irritated and everything, and maybe okay. you know push him further. But Different. now it's uh, I can understand. Yeah, yeah. That that's... these balls are not great, and uh, you just have to manage it and uh, mm -hmm. be mentally strong. That's yeah. it. And when it's uh, about jokes, it's uh, it's tough because you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's not funny anymore. It's not funny anymore. Yeah, it's like yeah. staged. Yeah, yeah. It's what is since you've kind of taken a break off of YouTube now too. What's been something that you've learned in the process of doing it, not just as a 
content creator, but as a tennis player as well, talking to different uh, people and different uh, perspectives? Well, I learned how to edit. That's the first thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a good skill, I, yeah. I'd say. And then I think I miss out on uh, social media a lot during my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it could help me yeah. uh, to, to be to find myself uh, inside this world after my career. Okay. Actually, I think, uh, I'm not sure 100%, but I think uh, this guy I'm working with, uh, he okay. found me through the YouTube a, okay. a bit. I mean, he okay. knew me before, but uh, I think uh, his father watched some of my videos and he knows uh, the, the way I'm thinking okay. about tennis and uh, how I see the game and probably yeah. it was a trigger why they <laughs> yeah. they wanted to, to work with me. Okay. I, I'm not sure about no, that. But it's a good start. It's kind yeah. of like your gateway into, quote unquote, the coaching world for you, coaching yeah, I mean, slash player. Yeah, people know that I can speak, can speak English. Okay, because, good. You know, that's, so. that's, that's great. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, it's like the idea that sportsmen are dumb. It's yeah. uh, this stereotype is uh, pretty firm. So, yeah. Uh, I'm not afraid of camera that much anymore. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I know a bit how it works that uh, we can stop and record it again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not just one. You have to do everything in one take. Yeah, yeah. It's, it do doesn't everything. have to be perfect for, for the first take. And yeah. uh, uh, feel it gives you more relaxation during yeah. the process. So uh, I feel a bit easier about mm-hmm. it. And then, uh, yeah, to learn something new is always great. And mm-hmm. in terms of, uh, I know, if it added anything to my tennis, okay. well, I'm not sure. It's tough to say I knew everything before, okay. what I'm saying in those videos. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's good. Again, it's perspective as well. Yeah. And uh, maybe helps a bit with my coaching as well. Do you think that a lot of people don't understand, well, have a better understanding of you as a player when you kind of have, I'm going to call this an outlet when you did your YouTube? Do you, do you think people gained a different perspective? with your YouTube channel or what was your goal kind of going into that project? Well, uh, it was uh, COVID times, you know, <laughs> I, I was bored and uh, okay. yeah, I'd, I wanted to, to try something new and uh, I started to to learn how to edit and that's how it started, obviously. Okay. I mean, uh, I like jokes, I like, uh, I like you know, stand-up comedians yeah. and, and stuff like that. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, obviously my my channel was not that funny like uh, a stand-up comedian <laughs> but yeah, I mean I tried my best and uh, uh, okay yeah it's uh, just I uh, like to learn new stuff and uh, yeah. I'm a kind of PC geek yeah. I would say you know I like uh, to explore new softwares new possibilities you know mm-hmm. now it's AI mm-hmm. thing and everything oh, yeah. so yeah that was just like a hobby. Okay. Uh, I used to play like a lot of video games before. I used to play poker. You know, yeah. you, you always need something yeah. apart from tennis to to, to enjoy a to bit. Keep uh, you sane. Yeah, yeah. To keep <laughs> you sane as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what was about it. And yeah. uh, I mean, I was never in pursuit of any like financial gains yeah. out of it because yeah, when you start, it's very difficult and. Uh, when you do something like that, like uh, tennis, yeah. challenger tour, it's very niche. Yeah. So uh, I didn't have that many followers. I mean, even like I see uh, the regular tennis fan, they are not that interested in challengers, to be honest. And um, no, it's true. Yeah, it's it's true that it's all about these top guys, and uh, even ATP Media, they most of the time they promote these yeah. top guys. Uh, so yeah, it's very very niche yeah. uh, to begin with in terms of tennis, and then it's niche in terms of because I was talking mm-hmm. mostly about Challenger Tour. And exactly. Stuff. So yeah, I didn't have that many followers, but uh, I think they were, were really loyal. Yeah. <laughs> That's good though, because I feel like in kind of picking off what you just said about the media, in terms of we have to talk about it at this point, the Netflix Breakpoint series. Did you watch it? No, I didn't. You did. No, do, no. do you have you heard anything about it in terms of what it portrays or the storyline that it's trying to create? Nah. 
to, well, I, I heard I heard mixed uh, mixed reviews? yeah mixed from reviews. players or like, from yeah from basically most of the time from players yeah um, yeah Dif- different stories some some people said it's like, yeah it's more about top guys yeah. and everything it doesn't show the real tennis yeah. the real grind and uh, others would say that it was good in terms of like behind the scenes and stuff and uh, you know to see what players do uh, yeah. but yeah it's, I, I didn't watch so. that that's okay because we asked another player that's here Patrick Kipson about it when we were down in North Carolina and he, he said that there should be a separate series about this because I feel like not many like even though it's niche quote unquote it's yeah. still I would rather watch someone struggle and go through what it takes to get to that top level but that just might be me I don't what do you think do you think that would be worth it uh I think to uh, make fans uh, enjoy challenger tour we need uh, to educate them first okay and to promote it uh, so they know what it is yeah because uh, I was practicing like the other day and uh, two guys probably two it was community so probably two rich guys so we're talking a bit about tennis yeah. and for them in their perspective even Delray Beach ATP was low level yeah and I'm like okay like you have n- no idea about tennis like <laughs> it's uh <laughs> These days, uh, the competition is really, really, really strong. I think it's stronger than it used to be 10 years ago. Yeah. I mean, maybe we don't have uh, such a big players right now as big three. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh, yeah, that's that's a generational yeah, thing. That's, that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, probably. But the competition, like from top 50 guy to like 700 top guy, I mean, everybody can hit the ball. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, I, I practiced a lot with different different people, and yeah. uh, I can lose a set eventually to anyone during yeah. the practice. I mean, maybe during the match it's different, but during the practice, I mean, on a bad day of mine and yeah. decent day from him, I can lose to anyone. Like even the guy who has like two points. Yeah, and the competition is strong and. It's good tennis to enjoy, mm-hmm. and when you know what it's behind it, uh, yeah. the the grind and traveling and uh, all the things we have to face, like uh, financial management, yeah. and uh, I mean, it's, uh, I think uh, tennis is great uh, school of life. I'm not sure if it's uh, great in terms of sport. I mean, I don't want my son to play tennis, to be honest. Really? I don't want. No. 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 You don't at all. I, I, yeah, it just too much of a struggle and I think the outcome is not that beneficial I would okay say. yeah as yeah would, I, would you still support your son if he wanted to do it yeah yeah of uh, course I mean it, uh, it's <laughs> not like I'm I'm not close my if you uh, unfortunately he likes to play tennis so <laughs> <laughs> because, I you know it's like father and son thing yeah he, he sees his father and he wants to be like father and yeah uh, yeah, but uh, I don't want him to play tennis. It's just that you've because I mean, as you've gone through it. It's kind of speaking from your own personal experiences. Yeah, I'm kind of made it. I mean, I was top 50 player. Yeah. I mean, how many guys uh, start to play tennis and never reach that level? Yeah. I was there. I mean, yeah, I didn't win any ATP tournaments and yeah. uh, stuff like that. I wasn't top 10 or anything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I have to. Uh, work as a coach uh, yeah. during my uh, probably last uh, year of, of my career mm-hmm. because yeah I didn't have enough uh, financial benefits out of my sacrifices I had to make uh, since I was seven years old yeah so yeah I mean it's I'm not it's not I'm regretting it but it's just tough school yeah. of life it gives you skills and maybe those skills will help me after my career (laughs) it's funny that it's i feel like it's it has to be a crash course in order to tell people what the whole tour is like because the friend that i'm staying with asked me is this a high level tournament and with no knowledge of how tennis works and i told them yeah it's a pro tournament but it's a lower level but they think a lower level can still mean because I told them it's an 80K. It's a 75, yeah. 80K. 
and he goes, you win $80,000. Like, no, 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 it's, it's, <laughs> it goes through the list of a hundred people that are in the draw. And then the winner possibly gets $9,000 yeah. before tax. Yeah. But that means you have to win out yeah. every single week and every, against every single player. And I feel like that misconception is what really throws people. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> Uh, but people who knows how much we earned during this tournament, they yeah. respect uh, it even less. Because they see like, <laughs> yeah, these guys running around like for three hours for to get like 200 bucks yeah, in yeah. prize money. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't admire these guys. I mean, I understand that. <laughs> I understand that. Like, It makes yeah, sense though, yeah. yeah. You see the guys like, struggling and like uh, really give everything. Uh, to get 200 bucks at the end? Yeah. Mm, okay. That, that's why I don't want my tennis and my son to play tennis. It, it's just the <laughs> harsh reality of it. Too. Yeah, and it's not like you play and you earn. Uh, no, you have to put a huge amount of work before that. Yeah. Because to be able to, to get into this tournament to and to earn play, those 200 to, bucks. Not even to win the 200, just to have the opportunity. Yeah. Because you could put $1,000 in for training and yeah. then get a hundred dollars back essentially in your investment and then you have to put that hundred dollars back into it just to travel to the next one and then the next one yeah some some years you you don't earn you yeah. just finish a year in minus so yeah it's it's a tough tough sport i would say yeah. like even though you are professional uh some some years you cannot count yourself professional because you're not earning money with it so <laughs> because it's not a it's not a profit yeah, occupation. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to pay. I mean, we pay taxes at the tournaments, obviously, but uh, then yeah. you don't have to pay anything extra because uh, you didn't <laughs> because earn. You, don't, you didn't earn yeah, you didn't that earn. much. Yeah. But um, my last question for you is having being a coach now and a player, do you think coaches who were able to make it on the tour, say make that top 50 level, do you think those players make better coaches or do you think it's, again, all about that idea of having a perspective? Well, as, as a top 50 player, I know a lot, uh, like things uh, what, uh, let's say, regular academy coaches, they don't know. Okay. But at the same time, I have, uh, I need to learn a lot of things they know. Okay. And I don't. How to work with young young kids, like uh, young players. Like for me, uh, to work with an adult would be easier because yeah. uh, I know how it is. Yeah. And if I would need to work with someone like 14 years old, yeah. I have no clue. I have no idea how really? what like it's it's tough. I mean, you have to de develop the technique. Uh, it's it's different thing. So I think I have advantages and disadvantages yeah. as a as a like former top 50. former former top fifty player. And I don't think every former top fifty player can be a good coach. Okay. Because if you uh, if you don't want to to learn those new things, if you think that you are complete, yeah. uh, and I've seen I've seen su such coaches like they think that uh, they played on a high level and they know everything, but they yeah. don't, and yeah. uh, they they cannot keep up with uh, the change yeah. with the new tennis what we have now. And uh, yeah, if you are not willing to learn, I think it's an average job. If you're not willing to learn, you're you're stuck and you you are actually degrading. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're just going back. Yeah. because you're not you're yeah. not able to adapt so my, so I need to learn a lot for sure yeah so what's one thing that you have learned coaching what would you say what's one big thing that was kind of like a reality check for you being a coach um, like I'd say yeah emotion wise okay from outside okay it's uh, when you see how stupid it is to to think about uh things you're not supposed to you know you don't need to okay and yeah it's easier when to then during the match i, I think about like yeah don't be that stupid it's yeah yeah it's <laughs> things you can't control yeah I mean, it, 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 it's it, yeah when you when you have that perspective and even even the things how i 
communicated with my coach sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. when you're struggling and you're like, uh, you know, you yell at him or you're like arguing with him and mm -hmm. it's like as a player it's uh, one thing and as a coach it's different and yeah. now I can see that uh, yeah many times I was not right <laughs> obviously <laughs> and uh, I shouldn't be that way and uh, but yeah and and now from the coaching side I understand that it's uh, it's emotional yeah. and uh, when you are Working hard when you're tired, especially, it's very easy to get emotional yeah. and during those grinding practice weeks. It's uh, tough, and yeah. uh, for me as a coach, it's, it's easier to understand now. Yeah, and uh, to be more calm about it, and that uh, yeah. you kind of have to balance out the player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I feel like it sounds like and to not me, to react exactly because you have to manage your emotions a lot more as the coach rather than a player player you can kind of quote unquote beat out your anger when you play because you can just let one ball rip and, and then let it go as a player you are doing so much physical work which affect your yeah. uh, yes it affects your match yeah it affects your game. not the game but like mental okay uh how do you say state yeah and uh, yeah it's one thing during the, during the tournament you're stressed out because of the result and yeah. uh, and winning and everything but during the these practice weeks you are yeah, uh, yeah exhausted yeah and sometimes like it's, you cannot control those emotions exactly. even though you are not angry with your coach you're angry with yourself but yeah. sometimes you, you say it out. Some, you say some things which can actually you know hurt, hurt feelings of your coach but yeah. now yeah i understand as a coach <laughs> that uh yeah and it's yeah. easier to manage because i know because now you know and now yeah. you're learning yeah now i know maybe i i hope my coaches in the past they knew as well so yeah. they were not uh taking it uh, so, too close to their hearts <laughs> so this is the youtube apology video from Ilya to his coaches so that way it's i'm sorry there you go so this is this is the form of the youtube apology yeah Ilya, thank you so much yeah. man i appreciate thank it you.